Love again. I'd like to begin by congratulating all of you who've come to this meeting and the people who've organised it because we have taken on a huge responsibility upon our shoulders which is to defeat a government that is introducing the most re right-wing reactionary policies that I've seen certainly since Mrs Thatcher and in some ways worse than that. And this meeting reminds me uh, takes my mind back 68 years. I was uh, then uh, 20 years old. I was going to South Africa to learn to be a pilot. I was in a troop ship. And all we were doing in the war, we were discussing what do we want after the war? What after the war? We, we, a few of us met and we said, let's have a meeting on war aims. So I was sent off to see the colonel in charge of troops. I was an aircraftsman second class, which is the lowest rank you can be. And he was a colonel. And I saluted and said, Sir, can we have a meeting on war aims? And he said, No politics in it, Ben. So I said, Oh, no, no, of course not. So we had the most political meeting I've ever remembered. <laughs> but one speech was made at that meeting, which I have never forgotten. And it did, a lad, I wish I knew his name, but I don't. He got up and he said, Comrades, in the 1930s we had mass unemployment. But we don't have mass unemployment in wartime. He said, if you can have full employment by killing Germans, why can't we have full employment by building hospitals, recruiting and training teachers, building homes, building schools? And it was, that, it was that argument that really won the case in 1945. People decided to apply the same application of uh, what you do in wartime to problems of peace. If you <coughs> have to do it in wartime, you must do it in peacetime. And it did build a welfare state, it was by no means perfect for God's sake, but at the same time it did build something which is now under direct attack by a government that's going back to the idea that if it's not profitable, you can't do it. And of course most of the things that really matter aren't profitable. I mean you don't uh, not uh, educate children because they can't afford to pay, pay their teachers, although that principle is being applied to universities. You don't apply that principle to health. You say, if you need uh, an operation, you have it, whether you're rich or poor, it's quite irrelevant. And that principle is one that is under attack. And uh, in building our campaign, we have to unique, unite people from right across the political spectrum and right across the country, pensioners, students, whatever group are affected are part of our campaign. And that means we have to learn again the lesson of solidarity. During the miners' strike, when I was the MP for Chesterfield, the mining constituency, we had many public meetings, and on one of them, a group of American miners came over. And uh, they told a story to, to explain solidarity, which I have never forgotten because it, it's so significant. The American miners said there was a disused uh, mining village in America and a little boy fell down a pit shaft and everyone gathered round to look down and they heard the little boy's voice and uh, he said drop a rope so they dropped a rope but it was too short and they dropped another rope but it was still too short and they dropped a third longer rope but it was still too short and out of the mine shaft came the little boy's voice he said tie your ropes together <laughs> now that is what solidarity is about <laughs> students campaign for pensioners, pensioners campaign for students. We are all in it together in this fight. And what we are doing, of course, is uh, resisting. That's uh, important. But it's also more than that. It's a big educational program we're engaged upon, explaining to people what is really happening. We've been told that, uh, if you believe the Tory ministers, that the reason we've got a crisis is because there have been too many people on unemployment benefit who should have worked. But it wasn't that at all, it was the bankers who were lending money they didn't have to people who couldn't afford to pay it back. And uh, this idea that it's all been due to the fact that too many people in public housing, too many people are having operations, too many people getting benefits, a complete lie. 
they're using that as an excuse to dismantle what we have achieved over the years in Britain. And by resisting it, we are also acting as a major educational force, explaining to people what's happening and why, and winning their support for different policies. And that means you have to look at the whole question of the economic crisis. It is a banker's crisis. And uh, bankers caused it, and then working people are asked to pay the price of their mistakes. And it's something which uh, it simply has to be understood. Uh, Kate, a brilliant speech about weapons. I mean, if I were asked to make economies, the one, the simplest economy I could make and cost the least trouble would be to uh, drop nuclear weapons. There'd be absolutely no need to anybody. Uh, and uh, 70 billion pounds, 70 billion pounds is committed to building a new generation of them. Or take another level of taxation. I looked up the other day for interest, what was the level of taxation during the war when Winston Churchill was Prime Minister? So I looked up 1945, the last year he was Prime Minister, and the level of personal taxation on the wealthiest people was 95%. Why? Well, they did it, they did it because we needed the money and because they thought it was so fair that everyone should share the burden. And now we're in a situation where uh, I inevitably income tax will be cut down and uh, people will pay the price in cuts and benefits or jobs. So that's what we're doing and I think uh, we're heading for a very exciting period. Maybe the police will not be so keen to attack the crowds because their jobs are at stake. I wouldn't be surprised if that thought hadn't crossed the minds of a few coppers. But at any rate, anyone who goes into this must know what they're entering and be well aware of what they're doing. And we're not looking for heroes, but there will be some people who pay a heavier price for the campaigns they're engaged in than others, and we must honour them and respect them and support them as best we can. Uh, you've done me a great honour in making me the uh, president of the uh, Coalition of Resistance, and I am at your disposal whenever needed to try and help your campaign. Thank you very much.